Biplanes, they're designed to use two pairs of wings, with one pair situated on top of the other. They remind us of an earlier time when people had a simpler approach to aircraft design, but many biplanes are still manufactured even today. Let's take a look at the top 15 most beautiful biplanes ever made. Number 15. The Gloucester Gladiator The first thing to mention about the Gloucester Gladiator is that while it sounds the same, it's spelled differently to the British city of Gloucester. That does make it easy to remember its name, though. This classic biplane was developed to be a military fighter plane and was used by the British Royal Air Force towards the end of the 1930s. It was actually the last biplane fighter that the RAF ever built, and it was unfortunately obsolete even when it was still in production. It was still put to its limits during the Second World War, though. In fact, the RAF used it all over the world, including in France, Greece, Malta, and the Middle East and Norway. A modified version of the Gloucester Gladiator was also developed for the fleet air arm, called the Sea Gladiator. 54 of the original 98 Sea Gladiators were still in service at the start of the Second World War. The Gloucester Gladiator also participated in the Battle of Britain, and the models were sold to air forces from all over the world, including to Belgium, China, Sweden, South Africa, Egypt, Finland, Portugal, Norway, France, Greece, Lithuania, Latvia, Iraq, and Ireland. That's a lot of gladiators. Number 14. Kawasaki Ki-10 as you can probably tell from this name of the manufacturer, the Kawasaki Ki-10 was a Japanese biplane, which was the last of the biplanes to be used by the Imperial Japanese Army. It went into service in 1935 and was nicknamed Perry by the Allies. This iconic biplane saw military action in Manchu Guo and in North China, and it was the brainchild of Kawasaki's chief designer Takeo Doi. The Japanese Army had asked for a new fighter design, and the Ki-10 won out when it was put up against the Nakajima Ki-11. Technically, the Nakajima design was the more advanced, but the Army preferred the Kawasaki biplane because it had a greater maneuverability, an attribute that's always in demand when it comes to military biplanes. And of course, given that this list is all about the most beautiful biplanes, you might not be surprised to learn that the Kawasaki Ki-10 was also the more beautiful of the two. That's despite the fact that it had deliberately unequal wings, which technically makes it a sesquiplane. Number 13. Marquardt MA-5 Charger The Marquardt MA-5 Charger is the first of the biplanes on this list that didn't see action during the Second World War. That's because instead of being a military plane, it was designed with hobbyists in mind, which also means that it isn't kitted out with weaponry. The interesting thing about the Marquardt MA-5 Charger is that it comes in two pieces and can be built at home, if you have the know-how. Yeah, you don't even need to be one of the Wright brothers. Designed by a guy called Ed Marquardt, hence the name, the MA-5 Charger was first built and flown by Daniel W. Fielder Jr. at an airport in California. Impressively, it was designed with aerobatics in mind, making it the perfect biplane for those who like to show off. Unfortunately, while Marquardt sold the plans for the biplane to make it possible for anyone to build it at home, he didn't go as far as creating dedicated kits. That meant that any would-be builders needed to be super confident with their DIY abilities if they hoped to build and fly the plane themselves. Number 12. Airco DH-2 we're going back to the World Wars for this one. The Airco DH-2 predates many of the Second World War biplanes that we've talked about and saw active combat in the First World War instead. Designed by iconic engineer Jeffrey de Havilland, who we'll hear more from later on in this video, the DH-2 was produced for Airco and it was based on and inspired by their earlier DH-1 model. The DH-1 model is beautiful enough, but the DH-2 is the only one that really turned heads. When it was introduced to the front line, the DH-2 became the first single-seat fighter that the British had access to. It played a hugely important strategic role by allowing the Brits to counter the Fokkers that had given the Germans such a strong advantage. Unfortunately, the Airco DH-2 was superseded by the end of the First World War due to the Germans developing new fighters of their own. And the bad news for those of us who love to see stunning biplanes is that no original DH-2s survived, although you might be lucky enough to see a replica. Number 11. Fokker D7 Given that we've only just talked about Fokkers, it makes sense for them to rank here. The D7 in particular is one of the most beautiful biplanes, even though you'd be hard-pressed to appreciate that beauty if one was raining death on you from above. 
This iconic biplane was designed by Reinhold Platz of the Fokker Flugzeugwerke, and over 3,000 of them were built during the second half of 1918 alone. In fact, these biplanes were so important to the German war effort that the armistice in 1918 specifically required the Germans to surrender all of the remaining D-7s to the Allies. Interestingly, the Fokker factory couldn't keep up with the high demand for the aircraft, and so Fokker ended up being manufactured under license so that production could keep pace with demand and to avoid slowing down the war effort. After the First World War, when a huge number of Fokkers were taken over by the Allies, the aircraft continued to be used, with many of them being re-engineered to use American motors. They were also used by the Polish, French, Canadian, Dutch, Swiss, and Belgian Air Forces, amongst others. It's no wonder that their design is considered to be so iconic. Number 10. Sopwith Camel the Sopwith Camel might not have a particularly exciting name, but I think that it more than makes up for it thanks to its incredible design. This is another of the First World War era biplanes, only this time it comes from the Brits instead of the Germans. The Camel was designed with a single seat and was first used to fight on the Western Front in 1917. It was essentially the sequel to the earlier Sopwith Pup. The Pup was a pretty good-looking plane, too, but the Camel features a number of improvements to both its aesthetics and its performance. Powered by a single engine and kitted out with twin machine guns, the Sopwith Camel is as deadly as it is aesthetically pleasing. Unfortunately, there was also a downside, which is that they had relatively poor handling, at least unless they were being flown with someone with a lot of training and experience. The Camel made a huge impact almost as soon as it went into service, and it's been documented as taking down nearly 1,300 enemy aircraft during the First World War. That means it downed more enemy planes than any other Allied fighter plane. Number 9. Newport 17 The Newport 17 is a stunning little biplane, technically a sesquiplane, that was developed by the French and manufactured by Newport during the First World War. It was actually a later model of an earlier Newport plane, and that meant that it was also bigger and equipped with a more powerful engine. Perhaps my favorite thing about this particular biplane is that it had a Vickers gun mounted to the fuselage that was capable of firing through the propeller blades. It took a lot of careful engineering to make sure that it didn't just shoot itself down. The Newport 17 was a real game changer when it came out in March of 1916, but not just because of how stunning it is, it was more maneuverable than almost anything else out there, earning a reputation as being the best pursuit plane in the skies. The actual structure of the Newport 17 is pretty typical for a biplane of its time, but the lower wings were a little smaller than most other planes, and so that's what makes it such an iconic design. But it's not just about the aesthetics, it also meant that the pilot had a much better view of what was below them. Number 8. Antonov AN-2 the Antonov AN-2 was nicknamed Kukuruznik, which means corn crop duster, while NATO nicknamed it the Colt. As you can probably tell from the name, this is a Russian biplane, and it was used for a bit of everything, including agriculture. First entering the market in 1947, the AN-2 was too late to help with the war effort, but then that wasn't really what it was designed for in the first place. It's more of an all-purpose biplane that was designed to be adapted to all sorts of different pursuits. As well as its stunning and eye-catching design, the Antonov AN-2 is also known for being a surprisingly durable aircraft that had a lot of lifting power and could take off and land from the most rudimentary of runways. And I guess it's no surprise that the Antonov AN-2 had such a long service life. In fact, after its 1947 launch, it continued to be produced until 2001, and it's still being used by both the military and private citizens from all over the world. Number 7. Fiat CR32 These days, Fiat is known more for its cars than for its biplanes, but that wasn't always the case. The iconic Fiat CR32 was another of the many biplanes that saw service during the Second World War, with the Italian plane also seeing combat during the Spanish Civil War. The man who was responsible for this incredible-looking biplane was an Italian engineer called Celestino Rosatelli. But it wasn't just the Italians who made use of it. In fact, it was used by the air forces of countries as diverse as Austria, Paraguay, and China. I guess Fiat had to make its money back somehow. The CR-32 is known for being super durable and for being one of the more maneuverable planes of its time, which is why it was such a popular choice for the military. It was used all over the world, including in Africa, Albania, and the Mediterranean. 
Unfortunately for fans of this stunning biplane, by the end of the 1930s and the start of the Second World War, there were newer planes using the monoplane design that had superseded it. Of course, that didn't stop people from flying them, mostly because there was a war on. They'd have been happy to take any plane they could get. Number 6. De Havilland Dragonfly DH-90 Remember when I mentioned the Airco DH-2, which was designed by Jeffrey de Havilland? Well, the aviation pioneer is back, this time with his own company and an iconic plane design that's well and truly stood the test of time, helping to ensure he left the legacy behind. During the 1930s, the Dragonfly DH-90 is notable for the fact that it has two engines as opposed to the one that's more common to many of the biplanes that we've seen. It's inspired by the Dragon Rapide, but it's smaller and has stunning swept-back wings. The Dragonfly also features a stronger fuselage and is notable as being designed for luxury travel for up to four passengers. First flying in August of 1935, it was one of the higher-end models on the market and is roughly equivalent to the private jet of its day. Of course, with the outbreak of World War II, a number of the Dragonflies were taken over by the Royal Air Force, with half a dozen of them making it all the way through the war. There was even a Dragonfly seaplane that had added floats and strengthened attachments. Number 5. Polikarpov I-153 The name here is another big clue about the origins of this biplane, which was developed towards the end of the 1930s by the Soviet Union. It was the natural successor to an earlier plane called the I-15, and it was used both against the Japanese in Mongolia and during the early days of the Second World War. In fact, part of the reason for the development of the I-153 was that the alternative, the I-16, wasn't quite up to taking down the Fiat C-32s that the Italians were using and which I talked about earlier on in this video. Built from metal and wood along with fabric to cover the fuselage and wings, the Polycarpov I-153 was supposed to be manufactured with a different engine, but it wasn't quite ready for its maiden flight in August of 1938. The good news for us is that there are still three of these planes that are still flight-worthy, and so if you're lucky enough to be able to hunt one down, you might be able to go for a ride in one. I guess it's no surprise there's a few working models that are still going, considering that nearly 3,500 of them had been built by the end of their production run in 1941. Number 4. Fairy Phantom Designed in the middle of the 1930s, the Fairy Phantom was developed by Fairy Aviation, although the three production aircraft that were made were built in Belgium, hence the name. It was designed by Marcel Lobel in response to a brief from the Belgian equivalent of the RAF, but it was the Brits who ended up adopting it for their armed forces. The Phantom was built entirely from metal with a fabric skin, and it was powered by a 900 horsepower engine and kitted out with an engine mounted cannon and two Browning machine guns on the wing. That's plenty of firepower to take down the enemy, whoever that might be. The Phantom first took to the skies in June of 1935, although it ended up crashing a month later. The company had already committed to building three others, which were eventually finished in Belgium. Two of those went to the Soviets, and from there on to the Spanish Republic during the Spanish Civil War. And so while the Fairy Phantom is undoubtedly a stunning biplane, it was never seen in the skies in anywhere near the same numbers as some of the other biplanes in this list. And I think that's a shame. Number 3. De Havilland Moth Jeffrey de Havilland is back, only this time he's got a different insect. We've moved on from dragonflies to moths for this iconic light aircraft that was designed personally by de Havilland himself and brought to market by his company. In fact, this biplane is so iconic that for a period during the 1920s and 30s, it was the most common civilian aircraft to be seen over the skies of Great Britain. It got to the point that Moth became a nickname for any light aircraft in the same way that people use Google to refer to any search engine. I've used the name Moth here to refer to a whole series of biplanes, the first of which was the DH-60, a two-seater with a unique design that allowed its wings to be folded against the fuselage so that the plane could be stored in a smaller space. It's said that de Havilland was a keen lepidopterist who said that this design feature made it look like a moth. Another interesting thing about the Moth is that it was specifically designed for the recreational market rather than the military. It was also produced in bulk and made available to the general public, allowing more people than ever before to take to the skies. Number 2. Avia B-534 Developed by what used to be Czechoslovakia, the B-534 is a stunning biplane that was built by an aviation company called Avia. Like many of the biplanes on this list, it was first developed during that interesting period that occurred between the First and Second World Wars. 
One of the fun things about the B-534 is that the second prototype achieved a national speed record of 227 miles per hour, which is actually crazy fast considering that was back in 1934. By the following year, the biplane was being rolled off production lines and delivered to the Czech Air Force. The B-534 had a good reputation amongst pilots, and for a variety of different reasons. It had great maneuverability and was a firm favorite amongst those who still swore by biplanes, even when the monoplane was beginning its rise to prominence. The fuselage of the B-534 was built from steel tubes in the shape of a rectangle, and it was held together with bolts, rivets, and wires. The wings were covered with fabric, like many of the other biplanes that we've taken a look at, and the design as a whole is so stunning that it's more than worthy of its ranking on this list. Number 1. The Hawker Fury The Hawker Fury isn't just a beautiful biplane, although it definitely checks all of the boxes for that. It's also one of the most important aircraft designs in military history. That's because the Fury later led to the Hurricane, and the Hurricane is the craft that's credited with helping the UK to survive the Battle of Britain. Interestingly enough, this model wasn't developed for use against the Germans, despite the fact that it was first built in the period between the First and Second World Wars. Instead, it came about because there was tension between the UK and France, and the Brits needed an aircraft that could compete with what the French had. Fortunately, the French Air Force and the RAF never came to blows, but the RAF was still able to benefit from the Fury's rapid climb speed, which led to them being nicknamed Interceptors. Much of that comes from the fact that it was powered by a Rolls-Royce Kestrel engine. Unfortunately, there's only one surviving example of the Hawker Fury, which you can see at the Historic Aircraft Collection in Duxford. Yep, you'll be able to see it, but you're not going to be able to take to the air in it. Watch our Vehicles playlist for more Top 15 videos about amazing vehicles. Sit back, relax, and binge watch all of our best vehicle videos.